he said something about driving up to his father's farm until Monday morning. Yeah. Took his new wife to London for a week. Oh, he's a terrible drag. He never stopped moving at me all night. Don't you just hate wet lips? Mm. Of course I brushed him. And I think Freddie's kid brother who's AWOL from the army. Yeah. I thought he ran away from home. He got as far as the pool house. Well, if it weren't for those sprinklers, he'd never get any water on him. Tim? Coming home for dinner? I fix you your pot roast. Yeah. Later. Uh, why don't you come about 12.30? Okay, right, bye-bye. See you then. Mm. Won't be home for dinner. Ready? Lenny. Ms. Austin? says she's leaving. I am leaving, just as soon as you get someone else. Frank, she can't just leave her family. Just like that? It's true. You have been like a family to me. Like a family? Ivy, you are family. I know what you really mean. You want to take your vacation. Now, go to Florida and see your folks. Well, that's fine with us. Why, sure, there's no problem at all. We'll fly you down and back. You take all the time you want. Take a week, ten days. There's none of my folks left in Florida. We send you any place you want to go. Um, Africa? I want to move into the city, Mrs. Austin. You have another job. Judy Townsend. She came up here last Tuesday night and stole her right from under my nose. I'll kill her. It's not the Townsend. Did Judy Townsend offer you a job, or didn't she? She's always offering me a job. I knew it. I'll kill her. Uh, well, listen, Ivy, if it's a question of money, you know. Not money. I'll increase the people for the heavy cleaning three times a week. It's not the work. What, then? Right. Just a minute. Wait for me in the car. Now, wait a minute. I want to find out. I'll just be a minute. All right. Well, uh, we'll work something out, Ivy. You're pregnant. <laughs> no. Mrs. Austin, we both have work to do. May I? You know, Ivy, nine years ago when we found you in Florida, you were an innocent, scrawny, 18-year-old, ignorant in the ways of the world. I figure if I'm in the city, I can get my high school diploma and then go on to secretarial school. You want to be a secretary? Yes, ma'am. Well, anyway, it took me exactly one week to discover you were a gem. Mm. And then remember how... Uh, where do you keep the clean sheets? In the hall closet. I'll get them all later. And you remember how I went to your grandmother and your aunt right away, and I asked them if, they, if they'd consider letting you come up north with us. That's the best news they'd ever had, ma'am. Ma'am. You keep calling me ma'am. And I keep meaning to tell you to call me Doris, like my friends. Or mother, like Jenna and Tim. The fact I want to leave doesn't mean I don't love all of you, ma'am. It's just there's nothing here for me. No. Oh, I mean, you've got Mr. Austin, Tim, Jenna, your work. I look ahead and I don't see any of that. Doris. Doris, what is the problem? Ivy wants to leave. I know Ivy wants to leave, but what's the problem? Well, if that's not a problem... Well, the maid who wants to leave, you get another maid. Dad. What do you mean, Dad? You get three maids. You pick up the phone. 
You dial the employment agency. You tell them to send over 82 candidates. You pick out 11 if you want. That simple? Yes, it's that simple. And so another little problem is solved. That's right. Doesn't it matter to you that she's like a member of the family? Well, how do you suggest that I express my grief? Now, listen. This girl's been with us for seven years. Nine. Nine years. We all adore her, but if she wants to leave, there's nothing we can do about it. Okay. Ivy? Is it anything that I've done? Of course not, Jenna. Look, please don't make this any tougher. It's taken me three days to get up the courage as it is, girl. Okay, sure. And it's not as if I'm never going to hear from you again. I mean, you're going to call me at least five times a week. Because I got to know the latest on Freddie, Lenny, Jay, Johnson, Bruce, Dick, and Larry. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot Peter. Ooh. I'm sorry, Mrs. Austin. But what if another nine years goes by nice and easy like the last, and I'm past 35, and I still have nothing? Nothing. Oh, Ivy, you have a good job, people who care for you, a good uh, home. Just a minute, Doris. Now, I don't think Ivy's talking about any of those things. It's not any of that. In the city, I'll have a chance. At least I have to try. Try for what? What do you want? I'm not sure. I just know I haven't got it now. Take all of these tops and Sandy. I will be right back. Freddie, please don't go. Oh. Who let you out? Never mind that, Nanny. What's with Ma? She's got the vapor, says she's not going on the Paris trip. Ivy's quitting. You're putting me on. Why? She wants to go out there. What's out there? Secretarial school. Career. Love, marriage. Oh, she wants a mainstream. Huh? No uncertain terms. Well, we can't let her. No, I mean, if she gets out from between me and Dad, he might, uh... He might enlist me in the Army. Yeah. Now, listen, we got to talk about that. Yeah, well, stop drooling. <laughs> well, Establishment-oriented chicks turn me off, man, except it's a social comment from my novel. I can't stand it here. Why don't you quit? Why don't you give me your telephone number? If she wants to go to secretarial school, she can go right across the street here at night. She insists on moving into the city. Why? I don't know. Hi, Jenna. Hi. All right, you guys, you've all seen Jenna naked before. It just occurred to me this whole thing comes down to the one big difference between you and Ivy. Me? Yeah. What's color got to do with it? No, 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 not, not color. Come here. Wherever you go, you got 11 guys looking to jump on you, right? Huh? No, no, maybe, maybe, maybe that's as simple as that. Maybe all Ivy needs is some guy to romance her a little. I assume Ivy's pretty well taken care of in that department. No, oh, no, no, no. Look, where, where, when is the last time Ivy had a proper date? I don't know. I mean, it's easy for you. Guys hang around here. They, I mean, they drive up to the house, drink the old man's scotch. You got more action you can use. She goes into the city on her days off. So what does she do there? I don't know. You tell her what you do? Yeah. But she doesn't tell you what she does, huh? No. Then maybe she doesn't do anything. But what can we do about it? What if we line her up with a guy? Like who? I'm afraid my friends wouldn't qualify. You're damn right. None of them are good enough. There's an idea. Not him. Hey, man. Hey, where are your bosses? In the office. Hey, what's the telephone number there? We don't have the truck, man. Now, give me some change. What are you going to... What we need is a cat that's real safe. What are you going to do? A swinger, but a bum. No. Yeah. 
I can't weaken control. See, some guy who's gonna wine her and dine her, man, but he won't marry her. <laughs> a good looking, no good dick. Final tracking? Yeah, this is Mr. Austin of Austin's Incorporated. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'd like to speak to uh, Mr. Parks and Mr. Talbot. All you have to do, you get out of here around like 2.30, see? Now, it's gonna look like an accident to her. But I'm gonna set this dude up. Mm. You cannot use the business to blackmail wait, 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 a man. Just get out of here, please. Hello, Park. Yes, this is uh, Mr. Austin. Uh, I was wondering if uh, you were free to come up here for a little late lunch. Hi, boss. your father no no he didn't phone you i did listen anything you want to eat i'll get it for you man so now what do you want some of that iced coffee would do. no no that's, that's iced tea hey babe a little iced tea for mr parks so hey man fine fine I was fine Monday night when you saw me. I'm fine now. Yeah, Monday night was a gas. Yeah. You're not married, are you? No. Why? You no, know, a nice looking cat like you, you're obviously not uptight for bread. You're not gay, are you? No, I'm not. No, oh, well, you can't hardly tell these days, man. You Paul, get me up here for a sociological discussion. No. You owe me money? You know I'm strictly cash with you, man. Then why did you get me up here? We got a maid named Ivy. I want you to take her out. You just, you just put, put that on my bill, baby. While I'm here, I will talk to your father. You ought to be put away, man. I worked this morning till 5.30. Then I have to be up at 8 to go to the office because my partner, Prince Talbot, refuses to get up in the morning. Two of my drivers are sick and half of our deliveries are late. What I'm trying to tell you is this trip wasn't necessary. You'll like her. What makes you think I'd be a good stud? All spades are superior at that kind of thing. Sonny. No. Why aren't you wrapping packages hmm? instead of procuring for colored domestics? This is a very special case, man. She wants to quit after nine years. Then let her. Impossible. I got news for you, Charlie. Slavery's been abolished, man. All I want you to do is just meet the chick, man. You said you wanted me to take her out. Just meet her. Why me? Man, you fit the bill. You obviously aren't married because you got problems of your own, see? And, and, and besides, you're kind of a shady character. Excuse me. Uh, would you mind leaving the tip? My bill, baby. Oh, sorry, Tim. But orders from your father. Strictly cash. You're kidding. But... Hey, forgot your change, man. I got for you. Uh, what's your first name, by the way? Jack. I always think of you as uh, Par of Parto. When you're not thinking of me as that uppity spade with the trucks. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, I love you, man. Yeah. Why are you so hostile? Man, if I know. By the way, how did you expect to get me to do that? My feelings are better nature. 
Okay. Brace us together next. How about exposure? Exposure? Yeah. Yeah, see, I got a square friend of mine who writes articles for the Daily News. And, uh, you know, gee, it occurred to me, you'd make a groovy subject for a piece, man. Your whole trucking operation. You wouldn't do that. That's a fascinating story. You're a rock. Yeah. I'm just trying to be helpful. I was a Boy Scout in my early adolescence. You're wasting your time. There's a, there's a wild coincidence, man. Look, there's Ivy now with my sister Jenna. Headlines, truck tycoon trap. Hey, Jenna. Oh, Ivy, there's Tim. And I wonder who that good-looking man is with him. Hey, Jenna. Now, it's going to be no problem at all to meet Ivy, man. No problem. Hey, this is a surprise. Yeah. I just talked Ivy into getting some shoes. I don't need shoes. Uh, Jenna, this is Jack Parks. Jack, this is my sister, Jenna. Hello. You must be that marvelous Mr. Parks Tim's always talking about. You know, Ivy, the one with all the trucks. I never heard anything about it. And this is Ivy Moore, Jack. How do you do, Miss Moore? Fine, I'm sure. I really don't need shoes. Well, I don't see how you could do without a pair of those imported Italian Florentine flats. I got a split. Listen, why don't we all go down to the cafeteria for a bite to eat, huh? I'm starving. So am I. I just fed you lunch. I have a better idea, Mr. Parks. As long as you're in the neighborhood, why don't you come up to the house for dinner? We would love to have you. I thought you weren't coming home for dinner. I just changed my mind. That's a great idea. What's for dinner tonight? I told you, pot roast. Groovy, Jack. Ivy's pot roast is out of sight, man. I don't care for pot roast. Neither do I. How about some of that fantastic bouillabaisse of yours? Whatever you want. Bouillabaisse takes a long time, but with me helping, uh, how is nine o'clock, Mr. Fox? <laughs> how is nine o'clock, Mr. Fox? You're gonna get run over by a truck and beaten up by a lot of colored people. Okay, babe? Where to, man? Get on over to Northern Boulevard. I've arranged to be picked up somewhere in Great Night. Not in Nassau. Yeah. Do we have to? The state bus worry me. A lot of things worry me, Jerry. Now, will you get up in a cab?
Give Dr. Morgan what he wants. Thank you, Jack. He's already into us for five minutes from last month. Yeah. What are you worried about? Haven't you heard of the Morgan family? Banks, Wall Street, Hobbit. He's one of those? No, he's not. He's a hustling chiropractor from Yonkers, so you don't let him get into it. <laughs> Man, you don't know the problems I got with that shipping department. Since when did you care? Hey, this dress is going to look fantastic on you. Wrong. Ivy, Ivy, Ivy. I won't wear it and that's that. You're really dry guy, you know that? I mean, like, how come you keep your hair like this? Got to be a better way. <gasps> oh. What difference does it make? It's nothing to me, I, but what if you go to live in the big city? You're going to be looking to score with guys, won't you? It just seems to me that you got to be, you know, uh, more with the scene. Anything else wrong with me? I don't know. Jenna? Oh, if I could just have about 20 minutes with her. Yeah. I see. Maybe you could do something with her eyelashes, huh? Oh, oh I could do so much with her eyes. Yeah. I like, sex them up, you know? <laughs> right, right. You're a fine one to talk. Just look at you. I agree with your father. You're a mess. Go take a shower. Okay, pick me up on the Jack, you're right on time. Oh, wow, you're gorgeous. Oh, we're delighted you could come, Mr. Parks. You'll love Ivy's cooking. Excuse me. I suddenly couldn't make it, man. There's a big fire at the store. Actually, it was a, a small fire. Could have been big, though. Minor smoke damage? How about a drink? I don't drink. Some pot? No, thanks. You other folks know you keep pot in the house? Oh, I haven't got any. Then why'd you ask me? Suppose I'd said yes. Then I looked around and pretended I'd just run out. <laughs> You're crazy. Well, everybody over 30 like you think people my age are crazy, man. Right? That's a generation gap. What do you call it when people like you think everybody like me turns on all the time? Stupidity? I'll serve them.
Oh, won't you have some of Ivy's delicious canapes, Mr. Parks? The stuffed green olives are... Mm. No. <laughs> won't you sit down? Tim, why doesn't Mr. Parks have a drink? No, he claims he doesn't drink. Some coffee. Oh, there should be some. No, no, I'll get it. I'll get it. I need, uh... Coffee? No, thank you. Yes, I'll have a cup of coffee. Would you like me to change the music? It's fine. It was a very nice dinner. Thank you. It isn't hard when you know how. You learned from your mama. My grandmother. She brought me up. I hear that you, uh... I hear you want to split from here. Well, I mean, it looks like a pretty good sentence. Too good. I don't want to die here. You gotta die someplace. Well, isn't it better if you don't go ignorant and alone? <laughs> Much better. Thank you. I want to go to school, maybe learn to be a secretary. I'd like to meet people. Where are you from? Florida. You're from the West Indies, aren't you? <laughs> yes. You can still hear it, eh? A little. Brandy Jack? Hmm? No. Brand Cigar? Your father will kill you. Those Cubans he smuggled from Canada. Well, he, well, he knows I smoke these all the time. How do you like her? She's okay, but she's not my type. What, because she's a domestic? The domestic. You wind up married to a girl like that, man. Oh, no, we don't want that, though, see, man. No. See, what? Would you like a pear with your cheese? I would. What do you go on a big date? Out. No, no. What do you do? I mean, if I want to take a chick out to dinner and I really want to impress her, you know? First, I'd get dressed. Hmm? No, no. After that, man, I mean, like, what's your favorite food? Japanese. It's a lovely place on East 53rd Street. But you got to call the day before. Very expensive. Tim, how about it? Ivy, you're beautiful. Listen, thanks a lot, Dad. Business-wise, things are going just great for me in there. Better take that pair out to Jack. And tell him it's okay for Monday night. What's okay for Monday night? He wants to take you out. That's what he said. Dinner, show. He didn't ask me. Because Monday isn't your regular night off. See, so he figured he'd better check with us first. And I said it was fine because the folks are going to the club Monday night for the golf banquet. What golf banquet? A golf banquet. Now, you don't believe me? Ask Jenna. And you better get out there before he thinks you don't want to go. Maybe he's looking for a religious experience. <laughs> Monday night would be just fine. Monday night. For the Japanese dinner, Jack. Folks won't be on because of inventory. Like a golf banquet. Golf banquet. Monday night. You know, one good meal deserves another. So Monday night is just fine. are really very cute. <laughs> hey, that's what I really begin to like.
like you, do you? Know? It's better than not liking us. <laughs> like I said, man, we love you. <laughs> hey, listen. My car should be here any minute now, but suppose I send it away. I mean, your folks will not do back any. No, not for a couple hours. Hey. Why? Well, I figured that since you're so interested in getting everybody all fixed up, how about me and you swinging together and let your brother take the maid? You and me swinging? What do you mean? Come on, baby, you know what I mean. And it doesn't matter that you don't have any pot in the house. I got something much better. And if we all let our hair down, we could really, really trip out. Oh. No, see, I, I don't think you quite understand. What would you say they were, man? Uh. Thank you. They look like aspirin. Yeah. They look like aspirin. Uh. Could I have a glass of water, please? Oh, no trouble at all. Thank you. They got B written on it. B is for Baffle, baby. Two of those, and we'll all be swinging from the chandeliers. Thank you. Timmy means an orgy. Yeah. See, I don't think you quite understand. I don't uh, understand, man. I know where it's at with people like you in the suburbs. Wife swapping and key parties, but that ain't nothing, baby. This is where it's at. The car's here. at 7 o'clock, 220 East 53rd Street. Oh, you really don't have to, you know. I know I don't. See you. Good night. You know, I think he really does like me a little. Do well, I want to help with the dishes? Oh, there aren't that many, Ivy. And what do you think? Fox is awaiting you. Please.
Why did you come out with me if there's nothing in it for you? I'll have a good, interesting evening. I'll steal the ashtray from my room. That'll always remind me what a nice dinner we had. Doesn't matter that we never see each other again. That happens. Anyway, I get a nice dinner and part of the truck and stays in good with the Austins. You do make me feel like a hustler. I don't mean to. Does it happen to you often? I mean, guys taking you out and, you know, not calling again? Once in a while. Those are the dues you pay for being free, aren't they? Look, I know you have someplace else to go. <laughs> That's a real family. They they live there all the time, day and night. It's been going on for seven months. Well, how can I explain it? They just live there all the time. Haven't you read about it? I mostly watch TV, news and old movies. They hardly ever say anything. They are very alienated, you know. It's, well, it's just nice to be here when they say something. Just like home, except if I work for these people, I keep the place a lot neater. <laughs> I bet you would.
at six minutes to uh, one o'clock. Oh, I'll wait for the 3.30. If I get home too early, I'll never be able to convince Jenna and Tim that I had a wonderful time. 3.30? You mean you're going to sit here for two and a half hours? Girl, that's crazy. I did have a wonderful time. wipe that off it looks lovely besides it doesn't matter what people think Take care of this. Kept some coffee halfway. Oh, it's too late. Did you have a good time? Marvelous. You took me to see this weirdy family living on a stage. The runaway priest, Oliver? The one with the bongos? Yeah. I was there two weeks ago. I was almost thrown out by the mother. You want some coffee? See you at breakfast. Bye. You ask you out again? <clears throat> Maybe you'll call. He'd be crazy not to. Ha, ha, ha. Sister. No, I just want you to take her out. You take her out. I, I, I've thought of it. I've thought of it. 
When I was 17, we were alone one night watching television, and I made a move. She laughed at me, and I, and I sprained my ankle. I don't think that didn't come up in my analysis, man. I can't bear rejection. Something wrong, Jack? This hippy dippy little mother here is out of line. Oh, lay off. Man, he did his duty. Billy? Are you married? No. I'm separated. Maybe you two could alternate. Go home, boy. Play with your daddy's mic. See, I could make a very loud and dignified announcement that these babies are loaded. I would. You are gonna go smash. All you have to do is take her out one more time. I said no. What? Good evening, Mrs. Stark. Have you a big night? Honey, I'm sorry. Jack's got to work tonight. Who shall I say was calling? It's all right. I'd be more. But wait a minute. He's got a date with you. I thought he did. Oh, I'm sorry. My mistake. Harry, yeah. take over the pickups. Mrs. Klingon 2, number one, Fifth Avenue. Uh, Lully? Laura, would you tell Ben? Your coat? Uh, I think we're going out. <laughs> no choice. I'm Billy Talbot, Jack's partner. Is this the Park Tower office? It's the best part of it. <laughs> hey, Jack. The artist is Charles White. <laughs> My problems with Milton are over. Look. I need you. What happens when I need you during the daytime operation? That's not my bag. But it's my bag. Downstairs in 10 minutes. You too. Look, man, ten these 20 hour days of... Not me, you fool. Milton. All right, please. So, five minutes with the fish, okay? That's all. Five minutes. Oh, wake up, Mars, man. You're supposed to be vicious, baby. Come on. Mars... Who's been overfeeding, Mars? He's always hungry, Jack. Piranhas are supposed to be hungry, baby. A well-filled piranha is just another lazy fish. Do you hear? I never saw a pet piranha before. Well, it's a constant reminder to me of what it's like out there in the jungle of life. Wake up. This house is... Uh... We own it. Patel does, anyway. Any of these children yours? No. Got any children of your own? Nope. I'm not sure I should even go out with you. 
Fine enough. Well, I seem to be in the way here. And it's just that I didn't think I'd have to work tonight. What kind of work do you do dressed like that? You don't know. Know what? I'm going to the movies. Wait a minute. I called you and asked you to go out, didn't I? Well, I'm going to take you out. Okay. But you don't want to. I want to. Say, what kind of place is this? Lurleen, look in on the kids and get them in the bed for me, will you? Check in at 11.30. I might want to pick up about 12 o'clock. You really didn't know about this, did you? I don't know if I believe what I see even now. But I guess I should say I'm sorry. There's nothing too bit about your hustle. Gentlemen, the games are now open. Madame and Monsieur, let me share to Miss May. Place your bets, please. Thank you. <laughs> Must be. Bunko! What does it mean when they say Bunko? I'll explain it to you later. Those children, uh, they're in the building. They just live there. Yes. Like I said, we own the building. Their parents work for us, and we all live in the house. Okay? On say, eleven. We now pay the line. I know a little bit about dice, and I got ten dollars. You're not allowed. Why not? We don't take from blood. Or do you or don't? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Look, man, listen to old lover boy Billy. If you gotta think about it, don't do it. Well, tell Eddie to pick me up at 12 o'clock. You know why? I can handle it.
Where is the... It's down that hall. What? Bathroom. I was looking for the kitchen. You were looking for my kitchen? Uh-huh. Why were you looking for my kitchen? I just want to look at it. small. Somebody really keeps it clean. Lillian comes in every day, so I can't use you. I'm not planning on doing that kind of work anymore. I was Japanese. But you're not Japanese. You're a 28 27. colored girl looking to get married. Why do you keep saying that? Because I'm a 36-year-old colored man who's looking to stay single. Is it true they give you baths? Who gives who baths? Japanese girls. I take showers twice a day, generally by myself. But it is fun to take a shower with someone. I've never done that. <laughs> well, you obviously have been going around with unsanitary men. I don't go with anybody. Why don't you sit down and get comfortable? Like color TV, the fish tank, or like home. When I was a little girl, my grandma used to take me fishing. Sometimes it was the only food we ever had. Never go home. No. Well, there's a great big orange juice cannon factory where my grandma used to live. Can I get you a cookie? It's no problem. Tomorrow's my day off. Well, I have to work night and day. When you go to jail, can I bring you cookies? That's not funny. Will it be funny if you get caught? Ah. Uh -huh. oh. You're a reformer. I knew it. A holy roller reform. I'm not. I'm not anything. That's the trouble. something 
Well, you don't want me, so I can't be very much. I suppose I did want you. I wouldn't mind. You just throw yourself at anybody. Well, you're not just anybody. That's right. Look, I'll call Eddie and uh, he can ride you around a while before he takes you home. Preserve your reputation as a swinger. Why wouldn't you mind? Because I like you. Now that goes to show you how wrong you are. You don't see that fish? That piranha strikes at anything in its way. That's me. And with little chicks like you, I murder, girl. I mean, there are bodies strewn all over the sea. I'll bet there are. Yeah, you better believe there are. You don't have to call anybody. I'll take the bus. I'm not going through that bit again, seeing you sit in that miserable place all by yourself. You're not giving me guilt, Spade. Well, I'm not going home in a limousine. All right, I'll take you home. I don't want you to. Come on. Why'd you even bring me here? Let's call it temporary insanity. The last thing I wanted to do was get involved with somebody like you. Well, you don't have to see me anymore. What kind of talk is that? But I do like you. You shouldn't like me. I'm no good. I'm a piranha. Mm You were asleep. And I couldn't sleep. There's one Bob White at the Austins. Yeah. Drives me crazy. <laughs> you people are home. I saw him through the window. Hmm. 
Wait for me, I'll be out soon. Okay. Hi. Mmm. Something sure smells good. It may interest you to know that I have a limousine with me. Hmm. And it is because that is class. Now tell me everything. Later, you get back to that blender. Oh. I'll help just as soon as I change. No, 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 no. It's it's still your day off. And besides, you have someone waiting. Yes, ma'am. Oh! oh! I can't even give you a simple thing to do like the blender and you make a mess of it. Mother! Well? Mr. Freeman, he wants to know where his gray blazer is. Oh, his gray blazer. Hey, where's Ivy? Changing. Catch the limousine, Betty. Where are you going? I'm going to have a hamburger. I am making dinner. And you will stay and eat it. I can't find it anywhere. And there's no hot water. It was supposed to be fixed, Frank. She must have really made out. I cannot bear vulgarity. What's going on around here? Did you call the employment agency? No. Well, why hasn't that been done yet? Why is this house without a maid? Why are we eating at home on Ivy's night out? What are you trying to prove, Doris? The whole thing is ridiculous. There's no ice in the bar. I want my gray blazer! Ivy. Ivy? Yes? Yeah? Mr. Austin can't find his gray blazer. It'll be back from the cleaners tomorrow. But Ivy, there mm -hmm. doesn't seem to be any hot water. I know. It's that stark. It's manual. Manual. Oh, I'll fix it before I go. Mm -hmm. Ivy, mm -hmm. I've never made gravy in my life. <laughs> Jenna knows how. What a terrible mistake. I'm so stupid, Ivy. Oh. Yes, I have such such feelings of, of, of inadequacy. So I decided, well, I've run a home before. I'll do it again. Hmm. It's a disaster. I tell you, Mrs. Austin, that dinner smells good. Oh, it's just that you're out of the habit. Well, why am I out of the habit? Because I'm so used to having you do everything for me. I've become too dependent, Ivy, and that's always bad. Oh, I don't know. Now and then you meet someone you don't mind depending on. Like Mr. Parks? Maybe. You going out to dinner again with him tonight? Mm-hmm. Right now. Dinner. And, uh... He wants to take me out to dinner, but I think I'm gonna cook for him. Then a movie, and... Then... Just, you know... Yes, I know. Did he ask you out tonight? Well, yes. He asked you? Yes, why? Well, it's simply that I don't want you to get into any trouble, Ivy. Oh, no danger of that. I got those pills Jenna gave me. Pills? Pills? Jenna? Well, she said they were from your prescription. I was talking about the gambling. Mother, Mother uh, the roast is right. What do you do oh. about the gambling? Oh, Lord. What did you have to threaten him with this time to get that limousine up what there? What do you know about Please. the gambling shop? Well, won't somebody answer me? Later. I want to know what you
what you all know about Jack Parks. What's going on? <sighs> Ivy, what's the matter? Ivy, it isn't Mom's fault. She knows only what we told her. I just learned today, Ivy. What did you learn? What is it? Listen, Ivy. Do you know about that truck? Yes. Is right. that how you got him to do it? Do you know what? Mother, it was not any of your business. I guess it wasn't any of my business either. So that's how you did it. Tend to tell him about the gambling if he didn't take me out. He never wanted to take me out. What gambling? And the worst I figured was he just wanted to stay in good. I've been making too much of this old thing. And I trusted you. You were supposed to be my friend. I am your friend. What'd you expect to get out of it? Make me stay here? That's why we did it. Who That's did what to who? And is that so bad that we love you enough to want you to stay? That's not why you want me to stay. stay. We'll even send you to secretarial school the same way we'd send Tim and Jenna. Frank and I talked about it, didn't we, Frank? You can live here and you can go to school right in town like Tim and Jenna. I don't want to be like Jenna and Tim. Milk fed and coddled. I'm going to leave and live in the city. Now! I please. Ivy, you let me explain. Oh. Get that out of the way. Ivy, I want to know what's going on. Oh, Frank. Don't oh Frank me. Ivy, please, I don't understand, you know. Whatever they did, or maybe they, maybe they meant well. I hope they did. Some big joke. My hustler boyfriend. And my family. I mean, I didn't mean to. I please. Nobody I... has to trick anybody into taking you out. Oh, Nobody. You belong. You're all fired. I don't want your crummy job. And I don't mean only from the job. You're fired from the family. You creep. And get your hair cut. Don't you shout at him. Ready? No. You can take off without me, Jack. But what am I going to tell Jack? You tell him for me that I said that he's a low-down, scroungy, low-life, Miserable, rotten, West Indian. Sure. Ivy, uh, uh, please, Ivy, just... Get off that phone! Dad, I have to call Lenny. Yeah, that's another crap. No, I can't let him walk into this! It happens to be a big issue. No, 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 no. Tim, could I uh, borrow your camp trunk? Sure. I... Thank you. All right. That's what everybody wants. That's the way it's going to be. I don't need any maid. I used to run this house before Ivy came, and I can run it again. have to go to Europe on the buying trip. I don't have to work in the store anymore. Where is she, Eddie? She didn't come. I can see that, man, but why? I don't know why, man. She told me to tell you you were a scroungy, rotten, low life. I lost her after low life. You stay close tonight. I may need you to use my car. Okay. Baby. Turn 
right. Jersey's to the left, baby. We're going on Northern Boulevard. The NASA game? You're crazy. Terry. Okay. Why we stopped? We're on Long Island. Where? The Boston House. Then he's insane. Get out of here, man. He wants ten minutes. All right. Give him the ten minutes, but have Eddie pick him up anyway. Open this door or I'll bust it down. All right? All right. All right. Now, Ivy. I told Eddie to. He gave me your message. He forgot what came after low life. Rotten West Indian. I came to take you out of here. No, you're not. My guys will pick up your stuff later. Will you come on? He's a murderer! Hey, 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 when did you start to care what she wants? I care. I've always now, wait, wait, cared. Just a minute, Doris. Now, let me handle this. Partel is fired. My lawyer is What's sending... What's Partel got to do with this? Well, isn't that why you got involved with Ivy in the first place? Yes, that's right. I played your miserable game. I allowed myself to be used because I thought I needed you. Well, I don't need you. There are other accounts. And she doesn't need you. Look, you had better... Get used to the idea of doing without her. I mean, the whole world would not come to an end because your maid wants to quit. You just may discover that you can survive without one little colored girl. Hey? Eh? Come on. I don't want to go with you. I'm taking you into the city. That's where you wanted to go in the first place, isn't it? Well, now you get what you want. How does anybody know what I want? Nobody asks me. People just tell me. Ivy stay. Ivy go. Doesn't anybody say please? All right. Please. No. Just a minute. I hold, it, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Out of my way. I said hold it. Well, just, if you'll all just listen to me a second, I have the solution to everything. Come on. Ivy, I think we should get married. Damn. If, 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 if that's too big a move for openers, we could live together for a while. We'll get, we'll get a little place in the East Village. Damn. Okay, the West Village. He means it. I... It makes perfect sense to me. You're very attractive. And you, you, you cook great. And uh, no, nobody can say we don't know each other. Now, there just seems to be one problem as far as I can see. What might that be? Well, you and Mom might object to the fact that Ivy is six years older than I am. Five and a half. I've... I, I get a haircut if you ask me to. I want regular shoes. I'll get a good job. 
like in uh, advertising or something. Uh -oh. <laughs> I've. You think it over, I. I guess she has to think it over. Am I going to tell him? No. Oh, he loves to have the age difference. <laughs> Funny. yourself. Now to apologize. No, you didn't. You came because you feel guilty. That's a part of it, I guess. Isn't that all of it? No. I want to wipe the slate clean. Okay. So it's clean. I don't need you to carry my bags and take me into New York. That's not what I want to do. No? No. Last night... You don't owe me anything from last night. If you don't stop throwing up those defenses, you're liable not to hear what I'm saying. Okay? Now. Last night... I made a commitment. I didn't ask. It's Boy. nothing you asked for. It's something I felt. It's something you can't control. And listen, that could be a little scary, especially when you when you think you don't want it. Up until last night, it was all because of them. But when I asked you for a date tonight, it was because of you. And tonight when I when I was waiting for you at the at the warehouse, I found myself really waiting for you. See? And I was thinking about all the wonderful ways your face looks. And I heard Slurry down home way you have of talking. And I was wondering what delicious kind of thing you'd be wearing. And I found myself grinning a lot. At nothing in particular, just grinning. that when you came up in the car I would whip open the door mm -hmm. and scoop you up and give you the biggest fattest juiciest hello kiss you ever had like this is that a hello kiss? It ain't no goodbye, kid. <laughs> Listen, Bill. Now, I don't know where this is gonna take us, but for openness, at least, it's gotta take us to New York. Excuse me, there's a hysterical man at the door who wants to see you. Time to go. He's really hysterical. That little bag is all you need. 
giving you your last chance. My last chance to do what, man? Keep your mind on business, that's what, man. Quartile's my business, man. And what is that? A taxi service for lonely domestics? I'm telling you, man, I'm bored with your behavior. And I am bored working nights in that stupid truck. And I'm bored with this square daytime deal. Keeping books, making making deliveries, making out with people I don't even like like they often. What are you going to do about it, man? You like Partel? You want Partel? You can have Partel. I'll take it. You got it. Just give me the nighttime deal. We divvy right down the line. You take Partel and I take that truck. You've got a deal. You bet we got a deal. Shake. You mean that, Billy? Sure, I mean it. The lawyers can work it out fair and square. Yeah. We should have thought of that before. Yeah. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. You get what you want, I get what I want. That's Eddie with your car. I'll take him back with me in the truck. I'll see you around, man. This is really leaving. Yes, it is. Does it scape? A little. How about you? Nothing to be afraid of. I got you into it. Compassion won't get me anything now, baby. <laughs> Just bail me out of here. You got it. What else can I do for you? One, one call to my lawyer. One call to my lawyer. How would you like a full-time, hard-working, daytime partner? You gotta get up at 7.30 every morning. Say hello to Mr. Early Morning Rice. I think I'd like that. Billy, really? you're gonna love being legitimate. Sure. You're not going to jail. Huh? Not a chance. But in case we did go to jail, would you bring us cookies? Right. <laughs> Something else. What? What have you got against West Indians? <laughs> Without Ivy near, I'm 
smiling too what he would do